Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy. Listen, so I'm here in my conference room. Number one, walk with me for a second. This video is going to be about 10 tips that will help you in techniques to crush it, kill it, and dominate your competition. So we're here in Scottsdale, Arizona. By the way, if you don't know where I live, it's in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have a 10,000 square foot conference room and every single month we train over 400 managers, owners, and GMs and top salespeople like you around the country. And by the way, if you're just getting in and you're brand new, that's fine. I got you. This training program's for you. But this right here, this is my conference room. This is where we're going to be doing some of the training all the time when we're together. But this right here, here today, what I'm going to talk about is some of the tips that we teach during the Master Closer Seminar. So what I'd recommend doing, get a pen and a piece of paper. Take notes, write everything down, because if you really want to learn and you want to level up, this video doesn't cost you anything to watch. It's physically free. This is going to be tip one. So let's write it down. Presenting. Okay, now listen to me. If you're taking notes, you want to write down presenting. Write this down. Trust and rapport, okay? Now listen, these two things are the strongest thing that you could have during a negotiation. Extremely important. Let me explain to you what happens. So we go outside and we sell a vehicle, okay? We make the customer love us, look how happy they are. <laughs> we go inside, first 90% of the time we're outside on the lot, right? The last 10% of the time we're inside collecting 100% of the money. Now listen, on this time when we're inside, you are going to have to present a pencil. Now look, the customer's state, S-T-A-T-E, the state, the state of their being. They love you, they, they see you as a great person, they know you're awesome, you told them you're gonna give them a deal they couldn't say no to. They love you, man. Their state is this. Now look, outside they told you they wanted to be at 400 a month. Guess what happens? When we present that pencil, what do you think is gonna happen? The payment's gonna be 600 a month, the price is gonna be higher than they wanna pay, and the trade is gonna be less than they wanna take. And guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna to have to present these numbers, maintain the trust and the rapport, and manage their state to stay happy. How do you do that? Well, you have to be great at presenting, okay? This is gonna be tip one. Number one, when your managers give you a pencil, okay, let's just say this is a pencil. This is our Master Closer Seminar book. This is where we train in our conference room. These are the Master Closer Seminar books that you can take notes in when you're here. I wanna show you something. Let's say that this says $600 a month, okay? It's a piece of paper. What I do is that when I present something to somebody, if I present this and I'm talking at the same time, do you think they're gonna to listen to me or look at the paper first? They're gonna look at the paper. Okay, fold the paper in half. Follow me, fold the paper in half, okay? You have something that you want to say to them. Get that out of your mouth while the paper's folded. They can't see what's on it. Once you get the presentation delivered out of your mouth, what you wanna say, then you can open it and then you can close them. Does that make sense? So you gotta be great at presenting. So your manager says, hey man, these people love you. Great, man, payment's gonna be 600. There's the price, there's the trade, go close them down. You're like, dang man, I know this, when I walk in at 600 a month and they want to be at 400, they're gonna look like that, okay? How are you gonna get around that? I call this the advanced equity program. Whatever it is, okay, it doesn't matter. This is a state. Remember, perception is reality. This is your perception. You are not concerned with this pencil. There is no concern. You are showing zero concern. I know the payment 600. I don't show any concern towards it. This is good news. This is great. But you can't say great news payment 600 and say, hey, that ain't great news. You got to build up why the payment's going to be more than they want to pay and why it would be worth it for them to pay that. So I always come in and say, hey, guys, great news. Papers folded in half. This is the advanced equity program. You guys qualify for a program that only 5% of our customers qualify for. You know what that means? Nine people come in. Ten people come in here. Nine people can't see this option. You can. Look, if you're going to go buy a house and you qualified for a 30-year loan, a 30-year loan, but also there was a special rate you could get on 15, would you want your mortgage broker to go over that with you or just talk to you about the 30-year loan you wanted to do? Well, you want to see all your options, right? So you'd want them to show you the 15-year option. That's our deal. That's what we want to do with you. If you qualify for something, it's your right to see it. We want to show it to you. And let me ask you a question, right? Would you like to get the title back in your glove box faster? I mean, I'm asking it, would you? Let me ask you another question. The card that you're trading in today, right? Yo, $18,000 on it, 11,000, whatever. The car that, and by the way, I don't say that, but I mean, whatever the payoff is, I say the car that you're trading in today, you know how you have a payoff? Let me ask you a, a question. If when you bought that car, you could have paid $100 higher a month in a payment, 
A hundred dollars higher a month in a payment and your car could have been paid off today and all that could have been applied towards a down payment. Would you have done that or at least considered it? Probably, but they didn't show you that option, did they? Right, so since you guys qualify for the advanced equity program, you, do guys, you guys do qualify for a program that allows you to get the title back in your glove box faster. So you know what that means? That means that you qualify for a program that most of our customers don't, and I'm gonna give you the opportunity to take advantage of that. Guys, right here at the $600 a month, I know that you guys wanted to keep a little small overpayment, but just like I talked to you about your car outside, would you have paid a higher payment if the car had been paid off today? Absolutely. So you know what? Just like this, a little higher payment, the bigger the payment you make, the faster you pay your car off. Abracadabra. Now you're presenting your pencil, now you're keeping the trust, now you're keeping the rapport, and the customer stays happy. Guys, let's move to the next one. Okay guys, tip number two, energy, drive, enthusiasm. Guys, this right here is like the driver of automotive salespeople. Energy, drive, enthusiasm. And by the way, if you have energy, what does that do? That makes the customer feel like they're in the right place. Let me ask you this, does anybody wanna buy a car from somebody that's a coffin dead walking around the dealership? No, man, they want someone alive. They want someone fired up, someone motivated. Well, guess what, that's you. And not that they come in and they're looking for someone to motivate them, but let me ask you this. Do you think most people at home got problems, got things going on? Do you think they got somebody positive in their life? More than likely not. And when they meet you, what happens if you got a great attitude? If you got high energy? Well, they wanna naturally draw towards you, and that's great. You want them to do that. And that's something that high achievers and great salespeople do, is that their people buy from people that remind them of their friends, but also, do you wanna be one of the lower end friends or one of the best friends that they've ever had? I wanna be one of the best. And people like to be around energy, um, they can feel alive, and honestly, it's just a fresh breath of air. So energy, drive, uh, and that creates momentum to take the customer farther. And then I think I would finish off with one last thing with energy, drive, momentum. That will create conviction, okay? Which means everything that you're saying you're doing gives them conviction that, that you're the right person and believability that you're the right person that they should buy from. And they'll buy from you because they believe in you and they trust you. Why? Because you bring a special energy. Okay guys, this is gonna be tip three. Closing ratio, converting every opportunity. This is extremely important. I want you to think about this. The highest achievers close at the highest ratio, okay? Most people close at 20 to 30%. That's embarrassing, guys. That means you're pissing off and wasting seven people. If you got 10, you're wasting seven. My goal is, is that when I sold, guys, last year I sold, when I sold cars, I made 716 grand. I closed at 70 to 80% at all times. My phone conversions were 50 to 60%. Live in front of me were 70 to 80%. You can do the same thing. There's no difference between me and you. But what you have to do is you have to focus on your closing ratio. How do you do that? It's real easy. You train. You have to train. You have to work on, like I said, your presenting. You have to work on your objection handling. You have to work on your closing. You have to work on your negotiating. You have to work on your self-believability. You have to look at the way you dress and think, man, if this person had $10,000 and they were gonna come in and invest that money with you today, do you look like someone that they can invest that money in? Let me ask you a question. And this is a good test for yourself, okay? And this will help you become a better closer. I'm just telling you. Dress for the part, okay? You wanna be a great closer? Dress for the part. Do me a favor, walk into a Chick-fil-A, right? Anywhere, just any restaurant, and go to the front and ask them, say, hey, I'll give you $100 if you, if you can guess uh, what I do for a living. And if they answer businessman or businesswoman, you nailed it, that's great. But if you look in the mirror and you don't look like a businessman or a businesswoman, how are you ever gonna close at a high ratio? People won't trust you with making their decisions because you don't look like someone that can help them with their decisions. Does that make sense? So increase your closing ratio is gonna be tip three. And how do you do it? You do it by becoming deadly by training and training and training. And like I said, your words are everything. The sale is either advanced forward or taken backwards. In most cases, it's done by two things. Number one, your words. Or number two, by your believability, you know, your energy, the way you put yourself out there, which is going back to tip two. Guys, let's get on to tip four. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so this is gonna be tip four. This is gonna be retail versus leasing. Retail means normal standard loans. Number two is gonna be leasing. You gotta be great at leasing. Look, I'm gonna tell you this. In your store, if they're doing leases, you have to be phenomenal at leasing, okay? When I sold cars, I did half retail, standard loans, and you're like, Andy, what's the difference here? One would be like a 72 month purchase, right? And then the other would be like a 36 month, 24 month lease. 
Guys, leasing is a way to make a bunch of money. Most people don't know how to make a lot of money with leasing because they're not great at leasing, okay? I'm not gonna really train over a lot on leasing and, and, and retail right now, but I would like to tell you, leasing is a pretty uh, a standard deal to, to get someone to lease. If your company's leasing, you can make a ton of money with leasing, but you have to convert people. And you may say, Andy, well, every time that I present something, again, going back to presenting, which is tip one, right? You're not great at presenting yet. Your words aren't great. Every time I present a lease to somebody, they say, ah, man, I've never want to lease anything. I heard that leasing isn't the way to go. I drive too many miles, whatever. We want to see what the purchase looks like. Look, it's real simple. You ask somebody, you say, hey, let me ask you a question, okay? Obviously, here's a retail option. Here's a leasing option, okay? Let me ask you this. Regardless of however long you're gonna keep it, I wanna ask you a question. If you were gonna be in the market for a home and you were about to buy a house and you went and you noticed on the news and it said within the next three years, the housing market was gonna crash, would you still go buy a home or would you lease one? Which one? Do you think they would say, well, I would still buy one. If I knew the, market, the housing market was gonna crash, I would still buy a house. No, they would say, well, I would lease one. I wouldn't buy a house. If I knew that houses were gonna depreciate 50%, I wouldn't buy one, I would just lease one. You'd say, great. So with that being said, when you drive this car off the lot, do you think it's gonna become worth more money or worth less? Which one? Become worth less. And since it's becoming worth less, just like the housing market, right? It, it's not gonna go crash, but cars do go down. And in the next three years, you could probably envision this house, or I mean this car, I'm sorry, being worth half the money of what it's worth now. Wouldn't you agree? And at that point in time, wouldn't you like to sit there at the three year mark and decide whether you wanted to continue to own it or turn it back in, walk away and buy something else? Yes, but in the purchase, which is what you've done in the past, you've never had that option. Wouldn't it be nice to have that option? And just guess what? Heaven forbid, you know, the, the, the car market does crash, which obviously cars do depreciate. You just agreed on it. Guess what? You're safe and you're not going to find yourself being upside down like you would be in a regular purchase. And then if you just love the car and you're like, wait, well, what if happens if I love it? Well, then you just continue to own it and then you drive it outright. And that little simple conversation, how I used and painted the picture of the housing market and then flipped it back around to the car, that right there changes everything. So I just want you to think about this. The way that you can go into retail, which is standard purchases, um, to leasing, and by the way, I'm great on lease training, guys. This isn't that. I'm just giving you just a little tip on leasing. If you're great on just using your words and painting a picture, if your company does leasing, know how to do both because you can make a lot of money with leasing. Let's get on to the next tip. Okay, guys, no, this is gonna be tip five now. Tip five is gonna be about hype. Listen, if you guys watch my sales training videos, I'm just gonna tell you something. I'm fired up about life. I love life and I live in hype, hype. I was a hype man in the dealership, as a salesman, as a, as a manager, as a GSM, as a GM. Guys, I was the hype man. I was always about getting everybody alive, fired up, jamming up, rocking out. Long story short, we have about 25 guys that work for me here in my company. We're one of the fastest growing companies around and I want to tell you about hype and I'm going to tell you about this. I'm a car salesman. I started when I was 18 years old. I'm 41 now. Guys, I'm 41. I have the energy of a, of a 16 year old. Anyways, let's walk in. I want to show you my conference room, my team, and I want you to just see the hype that they carry. And I want you to take this and steal it. Just steal it. And let's just see kind of what you think. Guys, meet the team. Meet the team. Guys, this is called hype. This is called hype. Let's go! Let's go! Is this hype? This is hype. Okay, guys, tip six is going to be accountability. This is probably one of the areas that you could truly destroy everybody on because most salespeople are not disciplined, okay? I always say this, what do you eat? Distraction or discipline? Look, accountability is everything. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you will become every single time. So what your goal needs to be is as a sales pro, you need to time block your day. You need to make sure that before the day is, 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 is begun, it's, it's won. And how do you do that? Well, the night before, I always write out how my next day is going to look. I mean, I'm not saying that something isn't going to come up, but the deal is I'm not just going to go into the day and hope. The night before, I'm going to write out how my whole next day is going to go. Hey, I'm waking up at 5 a.m., 4.45 a.m. I'm going to the gym, and then I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to take my kids to school, and then, I'm, and then after that, I'm going straight to the conference room. My deal is when I was in sales, 
I'm gonna go straight to the dealership. When I get to the dealership, I'm gonna be there 30 minutes before the dealership opens. I'm gonna have the keys to all the trade-ins the night before. I know exactly what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have these cars photoed, ready to rock and roll, and ready to put online. 30 minutes after the dealership opens, while everybody else is running around drinking coffee, bull crap, and right, trying to just still wake up, guys, I'm already alive and I'm killing it. Accountability is everything. Remember, the more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Just never forget that, okay? So the biggest thing you wanna do is be accountability. Also, be accountable for your wins and your losses. Always take ownership for everything. I don't care what it is, this will change you faster than anything. Take ownership for everything, your wins and your losses. Even if you lose, take ownership for it. Don't blame it on someone else because when you blame it on someone else, what that will do is it, is it gives away the power to actually change that problem, right? Whatever it was that made you lose that, not, not war, but the battle, um, you give away the power to change it. Look, just own it. I got my ass kicked, I got my butt kicked, and guess what? I'm gonna fix it, no big deal. And guess what happens? You'll level up, you'll take accountability, and the next day you'll be 10 times better. Okay guys, tip number seven. This is gonna be objection handling. This is my favorite, guys. How I killed it, crushed it, and dominated most people when I sold all my competition was my word tracks. My word tracks were deadly. And let me explain to you what I mean. When somebody says no, I could get them to convert that to a yes. And since I was good at that, guess what happened? I obviously didn't get defeated very often. And even when I did lose, which was very rare, I won so many times because I had great words that I always made a lot of money. Guys, my record month selling cars was 75,000 in one month. I mean, and that was selling, not being a GM or anything, that was selling. You can do the same thing. Look guys, I was in a store that was selling 70 cars a month, okay, when I was younger. I averaged 70 cars a month out of that store and took the store to selling 210 cars. How did that happen? And that was their average. How did that happen? Well, when the tide rises, all ships rise. What happened is that I was in a store where the mindset was the top guy could sell 10 or 15 cars. He could make five grand. And you know what happened? I just wasn't going to have that mindset. I didn't believe that way. My perception was my reality. My reality is I thought I could sell 50 to 60 to 70 cars a month there. So I did. Now, how did I sell all of those customers? I will tell you, I give credit a lot of my success to my objection handling skills. Okay, when people needed reasons and excuses why they should say yes and buy, I was able to provide it. When the customer fell apart and their, and their state of being would start to crumble, my state wouldn't crumble, I would pick up momentum and I would hold the deal together with great words, enthusiasm and conviction and I would be the trusted guy. And that was why I sold so many cars and I did great and I broke all the records in all the companies I worked for because of objection handling and word tracks. And I'll just tell you this, if you've ever been to my website, okay, which and at the bottom of this YouTube video in the description, you can see I have a course, it's called Objection Handling Course. Objection Handling Course. You go to my website, the Elliot Group Now, uh, dot com, the Elliot Group Now dot com. okay, two L's, two T's on Elliot. But when you go to the Elliot Group Now dot com or in the description below and you click on the objection handling course, I have a course for $299. It's a 60 video course that teaches you the toughest objections in a dealership. If you guys really want to level up with objection handling and you don't know what you're missing and you want to really fill a lot of holes, you'll scale yourself three times higher just getting that course. This is going to be the tip, objection handling. Be deadly at it. Your words either advance the sell forward or take it backwards. Your words will save your life. Okay, guys, I'm gonna teach you a little trick. And by the way, some of you guys will be like, man, that don't work. I promise you it works. I did it all the time, okay? So what happens is I'm gonna sit down, okay? Follow me. I'm working a car deal, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. They could be here. You guys know how I am about knee to knee, right? My customer's right here. Let's say the customer wanted to be at 500 a month, okay? And we're at 1,000 a month. I'm just making a point. And you couldn't do a first pencil close. Well, let's say you had to get, get them to commit at 850 a month or something, okay? And I got a signature here. Customer's like, man, I couldn't do a penny more than 850, Andy. I understand everything you're telling me. There's just not a chance in hell I can pay more than 850. 850 and I'm done. I say, hey, I totally understand. I completely get it. Look, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to bat. You guys know you're gonna get a commitment at 850, okay? And you're gonna have them sign it. I want you to understand this. So I've got a husband and a wife sitting here, okay? The second I get up and leave, what are they gonna do? They're gonna start talking about you. 
they're gonna start talking. I, I knew coming here was a bad idea. We wanted to be at 500, we're at 850 now. Dude, guys, it's gonna happen, okay? How do you prevent them from talking bad about you while you're in the pencil mode? How do you do it? I'm gonna teach you, okay? I call it the compliment close, okay? Listen, and you say, Andy, where do you come up with this stuff? Dude, I'm telling you, I sold for 23 years. I understand how customers work. People's state, S-T-A-T-E, their state is the most important thing to me. My job is to control the buyer and the seller management. The managing the buyer, which is my customer right here, is the most important thing to me. So what do I do? I say, hey guys, great news, okay, so obviously I'm gonna take the commitment of $8.50 a month back to my manager, I'm gonna get it back for you, let me see if I can make that happen, sign right there, I'll be right back. And they're gonna sign that, and I'm gonna get up like this, and I'm gonna say, hey, also, and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna turn around. Like, like I didn't mean to, like I didn't know I was gonna say this, and I just come up with it. And this is what I call the pattern interrupt, okay? It's called the pattern interrupt. I wanna interrupt the pattern of what's about to happen when I walk off, which is them start talking bad to me. I say, hey, listen, um, I, I just wanna say this, you know, ma'am, you know, I, I've seen you here with your kids, and obviously, um, you're a great mom. I just seen the, the love that you show your kids. I, I think it's incredible. I don't know if it's a little bit, you know, uncalled for for me to say this, but you're an amazing mom. Like seriously, like you're one of the best mothers that I've seen, and I just wanna tell you, like a guy like me, I, I didn't grow up with a mom, so I'll say, you know, me not having a mom, when I see a mom that's amazing to your kids, I just think it's a great thing, so, you know, sorry for just interrupting, I just wanna say that I think you're an amazing mom, and just don't stop, you're doing great. How do you think she feels as a mom? She's like, oh my God, I love this guy. You know what I'm saying? Compliment her. It's called the compliment close. Okay, you got a husband and wife. You know, you say, hey, look, let me go see what I can do. And hey, and by the way, I wanted to say something to you guys, man. You guys are like marriage millionaires, man. I mean, you guys get along better than any husband and wife I've ever seen. I've watched you guys around here. Obviously, you're madly in love. This is incredible. Look, when I go to get married, I'm getting some advice from you guys. You guys are awesome. I just want to tell you, it's great having you here. You guys are marriage millionaires and you're amazing. Sometimes, and I don't know if it's uncalled for me, notice I notice, I don't know if it's uncalled for for me to tell you that, but I, I feel like in this world when people see great things, you know the news, how they always show just bad stuff? Nobody talks about the good things in life. Like, I just see you guys and I think you're amazing. So I just wanted to stop for a second and say, hey man, you're, you're a great couple. I love the way you guys take care of each other. It's amazing. The fact that you've been here, you guys obviously are passionately, madly in love with each other. And it's just awesome. You're an inspiration to all of us. Man, they're like, damn, man. I feel great. Here's the deal. And some of you guys are like, man, man, I wouldn't fall for that. Dude, listen, you're a skeptic. The reason why your stuff doesn't work and you're not making a ton of money and you're not crushing it and killing it is because you don't know how to play the part of being a high level salesperson. That's it. If you want to learn how to destroy it, take some of these tips and techniques that I'm teaching you. And by the way, obviously I don't have customers sitting here in front of me. Obviously. Whenever I, had, I did have customers sitting here, what I would do, me, is that I would know my customers very well. So that compliment that I would give them would be based off the way that they would perceive it and the way that they, they would take it. But use the compliment close and use it as a pattern interrupt before you get up. Now that I've said that compliment to them, when I grab my pencil and I go to get back up, do you think they're gonna be talking crap on me after I gave them a great compliment? Or do you think they're gonna be like, it's a little higher, but you know, he's really nice. See what I'm saying? See you in the next tip. All right, guys, this is gonna be tip number nine, the fortune's in your follow-up. Never forget this, the fortune is in your follow-up. Man, most salespeople, man, they're looking for the one-time sell, that's it. Follow-up with unsold customers and sold customers, okay? When you sell a customer, how long did it take you to sell them a car? Three hours? I'm just saying, two hours, three hours? However long it took you, wouldn't you wanna take care of that three hour investment you have with that customer and make sure that every six months when they got ready to do something else, you were the person they did it with? And by the way, every single day, every single day, do you think that somebody mentions the word car, automobile, or something like that around them? Yeah, maybe if it's not once a day, it's once a week. Do you want your name to be on the forefront of their mind so that they can say your name at any time and have your cell phone ready? Yes, you have to make sure you're deadly at your follow-up with, with sold. Now, even unsold, if somebody doesn't buy a car from you, do unsold. 
and say, hey, look, the fact that you didn't do business with me, I just wanna tell you, I'm grateful for you. You're amazing. If I could ever wash the car that you purchased somewhere else, I would be happy to. I want you to know that I'm gonna serve you at the highest level, and even though you didn't purchase from me, I want you to keep me in mind for the future for any of the needs you have. Boom, dude. And some of you guys right now, you're like, Andy, I wouldn't wash anybody's car. I would. I'd go wash their car. You know why? You know why I'd go do it? Well, the reason why is because I'm not like my competition. I'm a million times different. And by the way, if somebody ever washed your car, would you remember them for the rest of your life? Absolutely. So guess what? Be different and you'll get different. Guys, the fortune is in your follow-up. Okay, guys, tip number 10. Don't ever forget this. Stay obsessed. Listen, it's real easy. In life, this is how it works. You're either average or you're obsessed. There's no in the middle, okay? The only person that's gonna change your life is you. That's the only person that's gonna change your life. It's the only person that's gonna change your family's life. I can give you the skill, I can teach you some tips on what to do, but ultimately, you're gonna have to make the decision to change your life. Stay obsessed. You see this book I'm holding here? It's the Master Closer Seminar. This is the world's number one automotive sales training program. Every single month, we virtually stream the live Master Closer Seminar with 400 people from all around the country right here in my conference room. 400 people, GMs, owners, managers, salespeople. What I wanna tell you, this right here, you can watch this on live stream or you can come train live with me in person. What I want you to do, let me give you my cell phone number. It's 918. 210-0254, write that down, 918-210-0254. You see this little guy right here? One of the things I'll tell you, he's 10 years old. How old are you? 10. 10 years old. Are you a closer? Who's the best closer in the world? Me. Are you obsessed with being a great closer? Yeah. Okay, let's hit little man with an objection real quick, okay? And you guys know that I need to think about it close, right? Let's just test him out. He's 10 years old, he's around me all the time. Ian, is selling one of the most important things in the world? Yes. Why? Because it will help you. It will help you get whatever you want in life. If you can't sell, you ain't gonna get what you want. Am I right or right? right. See how I said right or right and I got him to say right? I got you. Hey, listen. All right, so I'm gonna hit him with a little objection. So this is gonna be it. So Ian, let's say that we're on the lot. I drive a car, you ask me to buy it. And then I say, hey Ian, I appreciate it, man, but I need to think about it. Of course you need to think about it. I'm giving enough reason not to think about it. What I like to do is give five minute proposal of all the numbers you choose, have something to think about. Would that be fair? That's it, bud. That's it. He said, of course you need to think about it. He said, I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. He said, I'd like to give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers so when you go home, you truly have something to think about. All he was doing was as advancing the cell forward. My son knows over 50 word tracks and he's 10 years old. One thing that I'll tell you that my kids have taught us is never stop learning. Whether you're young, you're 18, or you're 25, or you're 60, and you've been doing this for 30 years, or you just got in the business, some of you guys are burned and you're on your way out. Look guys, I'm gonna tell you, I made 700 grand selling cars. It's not about me, I'm teaching other salespeople to do it all around the country. This is the world's number one automotive sales training program. I give away small tips and tricks and tactics and techniques so that you can see a better version of yourself. And if you resonate with the way that I teach, and if we think on the same wavelength, we're brothers and sisters, this is our tribe, our future, and you wanna become one of the world's best, what I'll tell you is always text me. We'll set up a call together and I'd love to help you. 918-210-0254. I'll see you guys soon. Crush it and kill it.